What would be a Surf Park Technology presentation without some killer video to start it off? It's groundbreaking, you know, five waves in simultaneous fashion, they all break at the same time. You've got an expert riding a wave at the same time as an absolute beginner, at the same time as an intermediate, and literally a break for everyone, as our motto says. I think many of the people approach us because they see these wonderful waves and, and they think this is a great amenity and a central attraction. And as they explore it with us, they understand there's actually many more layers of benefits. But then when they realize that, there's also, I guess, the fact that with that, you're creating 800 meters of absolute beachfront with perfect surf. So that actually is a developer's dream. They can capture incredible value and release that with retail, commercial, residential precincts around it. So it's like taking a mini Gold Coast and planting it anywhere in the world that you want. So the throughput per hour is absolutely critical. By producing the most number of waves and having the highest throughput, over 2,000 waves an hour, if you've got 200 or 300 people in the water for each session, you're going to have more people around the outside. So it could be the mum and the kids are in there surfing, she's hanging around. It increases the revenue, not just of the surf park, the number of waves that you're selling, it increases the revenue of food and beverage, you know, accommodation, everything is increased. Guys, thank you for coming here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Surf Park Central, for an amazing event. This has been such a pleasure to be here for all of you and uh, to share the love of surfing and the future that we all know is coming to it today. My name is Brian Guile. I am the Director of Sales for North America for Surf Lakes International. And I'm going to do a quick overview of our technology. Real important to know what we are providing to the market. But as I spoke about yesterday morning, I'm also going to do a deep dive into uh, the risk factors that this market is facing. So I want to apologize briefly for the light speed that I'm about to move through this presentation. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, so keep up, pay attention, strap in, seatbelts on, let's go. The theme of this presentation is Surf Lakes, a future-proofed technology. Real quick coverage of that technology. We got a developer's dream right here. This is a half mile of shoreline beachfront real estate that you can build anywhere in the world. I'll take a uh, quick example of that. Our Dallas licensees are finding that, quote unquote, people's heads are exploding in city government. In Dallas, Texas, the, the city government got wind of the possibilities of bringing Tahiti, bringing Fiji, bringing Nicaragua to Dallas. And our licensees are being thrown land by the city to develop this because it's just such an attractive amenity. One thing I do wanna say is that our financial model is so robust that you do not need to justify the CapEx by building around the surf park. You'd be crazy not to, because you're talking about hundreds of people in the water per hour, but you don't need to. So we've got two products, Surf Lakes XL model, which is what you guys have all seen. This is all five levels of surf that we provide. Uh, down here in the bottom left, beginning surf, intermediate longboard, think of like Malibu A-frames, San Onofre A-frames. Uh, advanced, that's gonna be like a trestles style wave. Expert would be trestles with a seven second barrel. I've surfed it myself. Things pretty sweet. And then uh, like a mini Chopu, the Pro Wave. I have not surfed that myself. Pretty heavy. Uh, surf Lake standard model, with, with all the future advancements in surfing that I'm about to talk about, that might not actually be your market. And we do offer a smaller product for that. If you're a resort and you're looking to offer surf to the learn to surf beginner crowds, we offer a reduced size model. It comes in at 60%, 66% of the CapEx of the full size XL and caters to the learn to surf markets. So all of this, I just wanna be clear, all of this is being served at the same time to the surfers in the pool. So no, no need, no reason to book separate hours of the day with your family members, with your kids, with your significant other, just show up and surf, decide what side of the lake you wanna be on. And then within that as well, we can also significantly increase and decrease size. So you might find out that our level four wave is too heavy for you in overhead conditions, but you can really handle it shoulder high or head high, and you can make different reservations throughout the day with that. So let's get into the risks. Oh God, they're out there. Future technology, this, this industry is rapidly progressing, and we have seen that just only accelerate in the last few years. So I wanna talk about some facts real quick. Surf park industry and its technology is in its infancy for sure. 
we will see future technology outcompete non-future-proof models that are being built today. Many wave pool manufacturers, and this is not a knock, it's just what I'm observing, are producing waves that are tailored towards today's surfers and not necessarily tomorrow's surfers. I firmly believe, from what I've seen in two decades of uh, skill level advancements in skydiving, that the average athletic 20-year-old in, the, in 10 years, 12 years from now, we'll be surfing at the level of CT champions today. Just a quick fact, uh, the last time I went to Waco, I caught 172 waves in four days. I was catching an average of 43 waves per day. I'm not getting on tour anytime soon. Chris Cote will let you know if I do. But my surfing's through the roof. I'm surfing the best I've ever surfed by leaps and bounds. And a pro catching three hours of waves a day like I was, they would catch about 45,000 waves in a little over two and a half years. That's where the sport's going, okay? So, future surfers will be very good and they will demand technology that keeps up with the sport's exponential progression and at a price that they can afford. Today, Surflakes, from what we've observed, is creating the largest waves in the industry. Uh, upwards of eight foot faces. Our commercial Gen 2 models will be creating up to nine foot faces, that's some significant size. Surfing becomes critical in overhead conditions. So when we talk about a growing skill level, the moment you take wave face heights and put them overhead, over six foot, everything becomes more critical. The drop becomes more critical, the barrel stands up more, your turns become more critical, floaters, everything, airs, everything. Um, we allow surfers to grow in to that. Kobe Perkovich on the left is six foot, one inch tall at a near full stand. Uh, in a commercial facility, he would be at a full stand, quite likely. So, servers will want to be challenged in overhead conditions. This demand could come from 50% of the sport. Today, it would not. What we observe with wind tunnels is wherever one is built, in about four years after that moment, the skill level of skydivers is light years beyond where they used to be because they have a training tool. And you're only as good as the people that you train with when that community collectively gets much, much, much better, everyone gets better. And then it just exponentially accelerates from there. Surflakes is future-proofed against wave size advancements. I really don't think we need to offer double overhead surf as a core market demand. 12-foot faces, 10-foot faces, stuff starts to get really serious in that realm. We can offer that, and there will be clients who do want it, but the moment you go overhead, the fun factor gets extremely exciting. People might not want overhead barrels. Maybe they just want overhead longboard waves or overhead trestles waves. But the best surfers in the world today, that will be an average skill level of like 13 year olds in a little over a decade's time. They're gonna want some size, especially when they grow up and their bodies develop a little bit more. So if the industry size, uh, the average size increases from where it is today, our generation two models, which will go into development as early as next year, they're insulated against that future risk. Let's talk capacity real quick. We operate in a 360 degree environment. I'm no mathematician, but I'm pretty sure I will never, ever, ever wake up to a moment where anyone can outproduce 360 degrees of waves. It's not possible, uh, which is very cool for you if you're considering buying our technology because it means we cannot outproduce you significantly in future technologies that we produce. We put about 60 surfers on a wave every 90 seconds with one minute of water settling time. So that's every 30 seconds we can put 60 people on a surfboard. I'll show you how in a second. Surflake's capacity is 200 plus surfers in the water at any one time. That's all skill level simultaneously. Just a quick little note down here. We don't use any mechanical instruments. There's no machine parts that are associated with the raising and lowering of our equipment. We use compressed air, which makes the big floaty thing go up, and then gravity makes it go back down. I've been testing gravity for two decades. It works. So here's a quick uh, model of how our rotation works. Surfers sit at the peak up here in the middle, and they're gonna surf their A-frame right and left, out back down here into the channel, and these are rotating groups of five, okay? So this is happening on four sides of the lake simultaneously, at the same time as, so just going back real quick, we've got 
one, two, three, four groups of five on the left side, one, two, three, four groups of five on the right side. At the same time, we've got two 30 by 30 meter learn to surf zones, which are on the outside of the pool. So you've got this peeling A-frame, A-frame here, and then inside that you've got the learn to surf zone. And those groups are actually gonna rotate in an opposite direction. It just flows better. We originally thought they would rotate in the same manner. But um, recently through testing, which we have tested all of this, we decided to have them rotate opposite flow. So we're gonna do some quick math here, real quick. In our main breaks, in our experienced surfing breaks, we can get 160 surfers in this bad boy. 96 beginners. Now if you are a mathematician, that adds up to over 200 surfers in the water per hour. We know we can get 256 total possible surfers in this thing. Why do we advertise 200? Why do we advertise 2,000 rides per hour when we know we can get 2,500? It's because the Aussies are just really, they wanna under promise, over deliver. So when we say 200, it's not because that's our absolute max capacity and we wanna sound good. We know that we can supply 25% over that, but we want to provide absolute reliability to you, the licensee, that we will provide what we're promising. So we say 200 per hour, 2,000 rides per hour, quite sure we can go over that. Something, who's, something that's pretty cool here is as you run at reduced productivity, group sizes reduce. So instead of having groups of five rotating, you just have groups of three if less people are booking in the pool. And then uh, I think it was John Luff mentioned yesterday that he doesn't want to be in a surf environment with a billion people. He wants his own cool little spot with his bros that he can high five and his wife and, and whoever, you know, the girls want their own waves too. Um, you can reserve this entire section privately right here and continue operating the whole rest of the pool. You don't have to shut it down. One of our clients uh, who's looking real strong in Southern California right now, they want to take buses of inner city children in LA, bring them over, put them in the pool for either little to no cost. They're not going to shut down. They'll continue operating, continue running, but they can pass that stoke on. Um, and you can do that in any market. So very, very strong financials coming up here. Licensees are future-proofed against our capacity increases. I've sat here and racked my brain for a couple years on this. We're not gonna get past 360 degrees. We move the thing up and down quick enough that I don't foresee significant increase in that and more people in the pool. If you can figure out how to put more people in this pool, give me a call. Please, God. All right, so risk number two, market saturation. We're on the S-curve. We are at the tipping point right here. This conference is proof of it. Look around this room. There's a lot of people who want to build wave pools, probably in some similar markets. In 10 years from now, I'm not saying the industry will be saturated, but we will start to see, we're going into hypergrowth. Can't tell you how long we'll be in hypergrowth for. We will get to market saturation, that is a fact. If you don't make it happen, I'll make it happen. If I don't make it happen, you'll make it happen. Future tech will dominate old tech in that scenario. Price declines will be inevitable as markets do saturate. Early expensive low output models will struggle to compete with high efficiency, new technology and new industry prices, lower prices. Future-proof technology survives that. If you're wondering why I'm with Surflakes right now, I did an entire industry review in 2019, traveled the world, surfed three different wave pools, saw Surflakes and said, well, I don't know about the rest of the competition, but I'm pretty sure if I buy from these guys, I'm not going to lose as a future client of theirs when they keep innovating their tech past me. I think they're past a lot of the rest of the industry, and I could buy their product today and it will still be totally viable in 10, 15, 20 years time. That's why I hopped on board. So just some quick math real quick. If, if we operate at 50% capacity, half capacity, at 40 hours, $40 an hour, we're clocking 17.28 million annually. Detailed financial modeling, which I would love to run you through, shows us at a 50 to 60% EBITDA margin. Really, really, really good margins here. If we operate at $30 per hour and 60% user occupancy, we still clock 15.5. This is surfing revenue only. This is not uh, additional revenue that would flow through the park when you have hundreds of people eating, drinking, bars, hospitality, all that. Everything increases. So 
what I want to say here is I'm not saying that Surf Lakes will open up at these prices, but you can. If you're a Surf Lakes licensee, you get to decide what the cost of surf is in your market uh, via supply flood because you can just flood the market with waves and, and do it at a very affordable price to high school and college students who they can't afford $100 an hour, but they can't afford 30, they can't afford 40. That's our core market right there. We wanna make surfing affordable for the masses. Doesn't mean that it can't be luxury. You can do this at the Ritz. You can charge 100 an hour if you want. If that's your model, go ham. But it doesn't have to be, you got a lot of leeway. Surf Lakes is insulated against future industry price declines. That is powerful right there. Based on those two market factors, I feel that Surf Lakes is future-proofed. If the wave sizes of the rest of the competitors in the industry increase, they'll come up to match ours. I don't foresee massive demand for double overhead waves. It, it, will, it probably will be there, but there's a lot of tour professionals out here who have a blast in eight to nine foot faces, seven to eight foot faces. Those pros likely won't go on a vacation to five to six foot waves. They, they just want a little bit more. And when the skill level of surfing goes up to match that, people will want it. So I've talked a lot about the future surfing and big waves and all that nonsense. But the reality is not everyone will want that. And in the future of surfing, everyone gets a break with Surf Lakes. That's our motto. The little guys get a break. They're cruising on longboards. Um, one, th one thing that I really haven't seen from just much other footage outside of our facilities is party waves. How fun are party waves? These girls are having a great time. Look at this background, by the way. With a 360 degree open beach environment, this is your vibe right here. More party waves. You can ride this, this is our level two wave, by the way, this is our intermediate beachy wave, we call it. Long boards, short boards with some foam under them, some fishes, stand up paddle boards. You got a lot of room to surf in the Surf Lakes facility at your skill level and at different sizes as well. If you want this waist high, we'll give it to you at waist high. If you want it overhead, you got it. One more shot, pretty good one. Now I've gone a little bit over, so we're gonna get into some last awesome footage. very much for your time. Yeah, round of applause. Thank you very much, everybody. Give me a call, shoot me an email, let's talk. 
Uh, thank you to all the technologies who are here. Uh, we're all pushing this industry forward together. It's going great places. Thank you, Surf Park Summit, for putting this on. Thank you, Brian. Surf Lakes. <laughs>